Hello and welcome back to Egypt once again. After taking a bus from Siwa back to Cairo, I took a flight the following day to Sinai and I'm now in Sharm El Sheikh, perhaps the most famous tourist destination on the peninsula which separates Africa from the Middle East. It's long been a very popular holiday destination for domestic Egyptians as well as Russians and European tourists alike and in this video I'm going to be showing you where I'm staying here at the Savoy Sharm El Sheikh from the lighter more leisurely side of traveling in Egypt. There's also going to be a trip to Mount Sinai via St. Catherine for some more cultural and interesting stuff here as a day trip from Sharm El Sheikh here we are, this is my room at the Savoy Sharm El Sheikh en suite here with nice tiling and a marble sink and into the bedroom my welcome fruit and the TV which you can view your bill, order room service, watch TV channels like Bain Sports with Premier League football and my favourite part is the balcony. View of all the other rooms and the gorgeous pool and trees around here. So as I mentioned, the beach is just at the end there, following the pool. It's a huge hotel, there are hundreds of rooms available. You can see all the balconies running along on the different floors and it winds round all the way here. There's also the Royal Savoy just behind where I'm staying too. I'm going to make my way down and walk around the area to give you a taste of the vibe and if you're interested in staying here then the link of Savoy Sharm El Sheikh will be in the video description. Headed down from my room and I'm now by the pool. There is a small bar a bit further up and as I mentioned earlier, the beach is just ahead, which is what I'm aiming for. Here we are at the calm waters of the shoreline which extends for around 30 kilometers the entire area of Sharm El Sheikh from one side to another in terms of resorts and how far spread out the entire place is and in fact the population of Sharm El Sheikh has increased tenfold in just the last 20 years alone before there was not much here but its massive potential for tourism was taken advantage of and lots of development has happened. Traditionally, Sinai is a place of Bedouins and nomads, you could say, but in certain parts of Sinai, just like this, the picture has changed quite dramatically in a short space of time. This is actually a private beach here on the Savoy. I love the rocky views in the distance and the golden colors shining on the water at this time of day. As this is my last video in the Egypt series, I'd love to hear your feedback. Where would you like to see me visit in 2021? And what kind of videos do you want to see more of? What kind of videos don't I do that you think would be a good idea? Leave all your thoughts in the comments below. I really appreciate your feedback. I will probably do a live Q&A session on YouTube after I've uploaded this video before my next country but I will let you know the details probably on my Instagram story if you want to follow all my posts and behind the scenes then do follow my Instagram which I'll 
link below as usual. Here at the Savoy chilling out, I've had the chance to sort of think about my whole trip across two and a half months here in Egypt after I managed to extend my visa in Cairo. And what a success it's been during the pandemic. Considering that, I've managed to visit Cairo, Alexandria, down to Upper Egypt, Aswan, Abu Simbel and Luxor, then far west to the Siwa Oasis and now far east to Sinai. I would take you in with me for a swim, but I don't have my GoPro at the moment, only this big camera with the microphone and gimbal, so I don't want to risk getting it submerged in the Red Sea. And so I'm just taking you up to this point. You can see the waters are crystal clear, the stones at the bottom, Sharm El Sheikh, as many of you probably know, is a world-class diving and snorkeling destination. Some of the most beautiful, colorful coral reefs can be found in this part of Sinai. It's now a little bit later and I've left the Savoy which is just down the road there with all the lights and I'm now here in the Central Park Square called Soho Square which has a lot of restaurants, souvenir shops and general things that all tourists would need. It's kind of a small touristy village I suppose. Lots of places to buy your souvenirs here and for tourist convenience, Vodafone and a pharmacy across the way, supermarkets and actually a lot of restaurants. There's a teppanyaki bar, sushi lounge, Thai, Indian, Chinese, steakhouses, a bit of everything which as a Savoy guest you'll have access to in addition to the restaurants at the property itself such as Italian, seafood, and the main Tirana, as well as all the bars on the site. At 8 p.m. I then left the Savoy for St. Catherine's Monastery and Mount Sinai, located 218 kilometers away within the craggy mountains at the center of the peninsula. So after a three hour or so drive from Sharm El Sheikh, I'm now here starting my ascent up Mount Sinai, 2,285 meters high. It takes around three hours to go up and around three hours to go down, I believe. It's currently 10 past one in the morning. By the time we get there, I'm assuming it's gonna be just after four and we'll be able to watch the spectacular sunrise. You can't quite see, but the stars are shining brightly in the night sky. Quite spectacular to see from here. Not much light pollution on the Sinai Peninsula. Mariam here has the torch. Shine a light on the monastery for us. Okay, we can't really see very much there but the monastery is just there. We'll be visiting after reaching the top of Mount Sinai and coming back down again in the morning as it's too dark at the moment. Some camels along the way, which you can pay a local to let you ride one up to the top but if you're young and able then may as well 
use your legs this lady taking advantage using my iPhone torch to light myself and in the distance there there's kind of a u-shaped valley you probably can't make it out but there's a few lights I'm just moving my torch like this forward so I can see where I'm going and then back to me it's actually not that cold I was expecting it to be colder but perhaps once we reach the peak the winds will kick in I've got a light jumper and a thin raincoat on which is kind of acting hopefully as a windbreaker and a cap just to keep the warmth on my head but once you start walking it's actually not too bad in fact I'm starting to sweat already so even if it's a bit chilly it's quite a hike for three hours so your body will warm up eventually and then once you reach the top there's the option of renting a blanket from some guys there after walking for a little while we have reached the first stop you can see there are tissues if you need to use the toilet <laughs> water is available everything you need even dates uh, there are three stops along the way to the top of Mount Sinai so everything you need is just a moment away another rest stop nearly at the summit there is one more final part with a lot of steps before you reach the top and the longer it goes on a bit more challenging the walk gets but it's still able to be done by anybody who's young and fit I'm not really showing much of the walking as it's so dark and I can't really <laughs> show you the scenery but on the way down I'm sure I'll be able to capture a bit more of it climbing now the 750 or so granite steps to reach the peak the last part but also the hardest once at the summit the wind became incredibly strong to the point where I was struggling to film at all because of the difficulty in keeping my camera steady Make sure you hire a blanket from one of the small guest houses at the peak as the wind is piercingly cold just before sunrise. The peak of Jubal Musa or Mount Moses is 2,285 metres high and for Muslims, Jews and Christians it is the spot where God delivered his Ten Commandments to Moses. The sunrise view from here is breathtaking and makes up for all the effort to reach the top. Now here at the top of Mount Sinai, the sun rising behind me there and all the incredible rocky landscape around revealed. The wind is very strong so it's been difficult to film up here but it's been a very good experience to climb just behind me there is where Moses spent 40 days and here he received the Ten Commandments from God which makes it a great pilgrimage site for Muslims, Jews and Christians alike and has been for hundreds and thousands of years. After descending down the mountain in the morning light you can then visit St Catherine's Monastery at the base. Originating from around AD 330, when Byzantine Empress Helena had a small chapel built beside the burning bush from which God spoke to Moses. The monastery is considered today as one of the oldest continually functioning monastic communities in the world. It's named after the legendary martyr of Alexandria, Catherine, who was tortured on a spike wheel and beheaded for her faith. Tradition holds that angels transported her body to the peak from the torture device. 300 years later, monks found her body in a perfect state of preservation. This is my last video from this Egypt series, so do stay tuned for more travel content coming in 2021. And let me know your travel suggestions once again in the comments below or through my Instagram. See you in the next country, and until then, peace. Music